we're going to go to the analysis section of MapMate and look at using wildcard characters to run queries on the data. For these examples, I'm going to look at records of butterflies, but the same principle applies whatever data you're dealing with. As you get more data on MapMate, you'll probably find that some recorder names get duplicated, perhaps in combination with different people. And site names can also become duplicated, particularly if there are lots of different compartments involved in a particular site. MapMate has a way of dealing with this so that you can analyse all your records in one place. So we're going to open the Browse Records queries. And the two areas where you can use wildcards are when you're looking at records in relation to a particular recorder name or with a site name. We'll start off using a recorder name example. So I'm going to double click to run this query. And I'm going to enter my surname and I press enter. MapMate comes up with a list of all the recorder names that have the word Harvey somewhere in them including myself in combination with a number of other people. And if I want to look at all the records that I've ever contributed to, um, well, first of all, it looks like what I could do would be to tick these boxes. And that does work if you've only got a few combinations that you want to join up. But unfortunately, there seems to be a limit on how many that you can tick. And if you tick too many, the query doesn't run properly. But there's another way of doing it. And that's to use these wildcard characters. A wildcard is simply a character that represents any combination of text or numbers or spaces or anything else within the um, string of text that makes up the recorder name. So, for instance, if I put the wildcard, which in MapMate is represented by an asterisk, at the beginning of the name here, and another one at the end, I can now press Enter again, and I get a very similar looking list. But this time, having used the wildcards, I can click back into the box at the top. And we can now see that a message has appeared at the bottom saying click OK to use Harvey with the wildcards on either side. And if I click OK at this point, it opens up the browse list showing all the records. And at first glance, it hasn't done anything very different. It's just listed all my records. But if we scroll down this list, we start to see that it's included my name on its own, but also in combination with other people. So it has, in fact, done the job of combining everything that has the word Harvey in there. Let's go back to the query list. Let's try using the wildcards again, but this time for a site name. Double click on Browse All Records for a site. And I'm going to look at a site called Larden Chase, which, as you can see, has been entered in quite a lot of different ways on this particular set of data, including a whole lot of different compartments within Larden Chase. And what we want to do is to come up with a list of records, of, of all the records for all the compartments within Larden Chase. So we'll use the wildcards. We'll put one in front of the name and one at the end of the name. Press Enter again to refresh the list, then click back in the box so that you get the message click OK to use Larden with the asterisks. And we we'll click OK and we can see straight away that the list of records does include all those different compartments. Let's take this one stage further and perhaps we want to look at all the records that relate to compartment 3. There's compartment 3 on its own. But there's also compartment 3 in connection with compartment 2. So we need to find a way of combining those together. And I've just seen there's also compartment 3 and 7. So we want to pick up everything that has compartment 3 involved in it. So back into the query list. Double click on the query again. The wildcard. Larden wildcard. And this time we can put 3 and another wildcard. So this is looking for any site that has the word Larden in it somewhere, which is then followed by the number 3 somewhere. But the asterisks show that there could be any or no text in between the word Larden and number 3. So in other words, you can position the wildcards wherever you need to to get the selection of sites that you actually need. So we'll press Enter. And this time we get a smaller selection of compartments, all having the number 3 within them click back in the box, click OK to use 
this site with the wildcards. OK, and there we have our list of records that apply to compartment 3 in this case. Let's go back to our query list one more time. We've been using wildcards in the browse records queries, but you can do the same thing for the species lists. So we'll stick with our Lard and Chase example, species list for a site. So just as we did before, we fill in the details, press enter, click back in the box, click OK to use the wildcards. So what we're looking at here is the list of all the species that have been recorded at Lard and Chase in anything that mentions compartment 3. But you can't actually see from this particular browse list that that is in fact what has been done. You have to take it on trust that the wildcards have worked. So what I normally do is to run a browse records query with my wildcards first of all to make sure that I can see that the right sites are being included. And when I'm confident that I've got the right combination of wildcards, I can then run the equivalent query for the species list. The wildcard function in MapMate is quite a powerful way of combining data together when you have got varying versions of site names and people names, and it's worth playing around with a few times to familiarise yourself with how it all works.